Hi, welcome to another edition of Azure Everyday with Pragmatic Works. My name is Steve Hughes, and today we're going to talk about the multi-model database service portion of Cosmos DB. Chris would have uh, introduced you to Cosmos DB a little while back in a general overview of the product. Today we want to dig into a couple specifics and just kind of walk through what this database service means to you and, and why, in this case, what does multi-model mean to you and why would you care? So when we talk about multi-model database service, what we're getting at is the fact that the data can be stored in a number of different ways. Currently, Cosmos DB stores four different types of data and it allows you to actually integrate with an API and build out a user experience around those uh, different types of database uh, storage types. So as we look at what that means, we're going to jump into it. We're going to talk a little bit about the APIs that support those models and then kind of go really quickly from there about you know what you might use each one for. So when we look at the, the primary one that we all think about is that uh, this document database or in this case document DB or MongoDB. Those are the two APIs. Well, the document DB is actually called a SQL API, not to be confused with actually working with a SQL database. Um, in this case, the SQL API works with the document DB uh, protocols and the MongoDB API works with Mongo APIs. Both of them interact with document database. And what this comes down to is the fact that we store the data in a JSON format or similar and allow you to interact with those documents in the database. And you can use either of those APIs to interact with the data in this way. And it really helps you as you move forward to understand that you have those both those options. The If you're starting from scratch, it's probably the easiest thing to do is use a SQL API because it's going to be the most native version of working with Cosmos DB. And Cosmos DB grew out of Document DB, the original Azure uh, document database storage solution. However, if you have a Mongo database solution and you want to look at making it globally aware or doing some more, you know, scaling it out more, you can actually move it directly into doc, into uh, Cosmos DB and use a MongoDB API to interact with that data. Once again, that's a document database uh, model of storage. The next one we we'll talk about is the graph database model of storage. The graph storage is similar to what you would use like for the Facebook to draw relationships between your data and understand how the data is related and works together. When working with that, um, Microsoft has chosen to use the Gremlin API from the Tinkerpop project in Apache. So they're using an open source API that already exists and basically enabling you to interact with a graph database. Once again, completely globally scaled and all the rest of the Cosmos features built into what it is. It's just a different way of storing your data. The key value pair is another way of storing your data. So with the key and the values associated to that, in that type of database solution is supported on the, you know, the standard Azure table API. That API basically follows the same schema and design as what you would get if you use Azure table storage. So they're just leveraging an existing platform within Azure that's been around a while and giving you the ability to interact with your data in the same way. The fourth option is wide column uh, or column family. In this scenario, Microsoft is leveraging the Cassandra API for that solution. So this allows you to look at um, what, if you have a Cassandra implementation, you have the opportunity to move that to Cosmos DB as well and be able to use this wide column format that you see used in Cassandra and the ability to, to leverage some of that work. Um, as you move forward, one a couple things to keep in mind. Picking the API is not the end all. Uh, you have the option to, the data stored there, so you have the option to leverage or look at some of that data using the other APIs because at the end of the day, it's still a database underlying this. These APIs give you the opportunity to pick and choose how you choose to interact with the data and how the data is optimized in the database in the back end. So keep in mind that we're looking at a global, global scale, the high availability, all the SLAs involved. We'll talk more about those in later sessions, but I just want you to be aware that these are the types of models that are supported within Cosmos DB. And if you have a workload that works around one of these, this is a great option for you to look at as you move forward on your Azure experience. If you have any questions, feel free to click the link below. We'd love to reach out and talk to you a little bit more about using Cosmos DB in your environment. Thank you and have a great day.